Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta and our deep dive into Thoth, the Emerald Tablets, and the Halls of Amente. This is the third video that we're covering on this topic. Last week, we went through the Fall of Atlantis and the first tablet. So if you missed that video, I will put it in the description box below. I will also put our very first video down in the description box below because in our very first first video we talked a lot about tablet two which is what we're going to be talking about today so with that being said i'm not going to give much of an introduction into what the halls of amente are just so i don't have to beat a dead horse and repeat myself so if you would like to pause this video and go down to the description box and watch the other two first totally fine if you've already seen them then let's go ahead and get started with tablet two the halls of amente so again Last week, I ended our episode off where I just read through the first tablet. I'm not going to do that here on this episode because I read through this tablet on the first episode. So if you want to sit and listen to the soundtrack of the reading, that can be found on the very first episode. What we're going to do today is I'm going to read through it again, but we're also going to look at the translation that Doriel has given us in some of his commentary. And it's so interesting because the very first time I read the second tablet here about the Halls of Amente, all I could think about was Agartha. Now we know, and I want to really reiterate, that the most important part of these tablets are spiritual. It's a spiritual vibration. And even though I do believe that all this stuff that Thoth is talking about really does exist and really did happen, we can also see all of this as the metaphor, as going down into the depths of ourselves to heal ourselves, to raise that vibration in order to enter into the new paradigm of human evolution. All right. And I'm going to give you some locations or Doriel is actually going to give you some locations of where some of these entrances could possibly be into the halls of Amente, which again has heavy Agartha overturns to me. Um, and I think it was like maybe a little over a year ago, we did a whole deep dive into Agartha on this video, on this channel. So if you don't know what Agartha is, that's a whole other subject on its own. I have plenty of videos on my channel about Agartha, so does other people. So, but you'll see what I mean when we get into the subject. So again, with tablet two, this is called the Halls of Amente. The first tablet, we, we met Thoth, we know who Thoth is, and we saw the fall of Atlantis. And that we ended off the first tablet of Thoth going into the Halls of Amente for his rest until he was ready to reemerge again. Deep in the, in the Earth's heart lie the Halls of Amente. Far beneath the islands of sunken Atlantis, halls of the dead and halls of the living, bathe in the fire of the infinite all. Far in a past time, lost in the space time, the children of light look down on the world, seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. We're going to talk about this in a second. Knew they that only by freedom from bondage could man ever rise from the earth to the sun. Down they descended and created bodies, taking the semblance of man as their own. The masters of everything said they're forming. We are they who were formed from the space dust, partaking of life from the infinite all, living in the world as children of men, like and yet unlike the children of men. And so we come back, seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by a force that came from beyond. So if you remember last week, we spoke about the, the timeline of Atlantis. And so first we had Lumeria, which uh, Lumeria scholars will tell you, Lumeria was the time before confusion. So what does that mean to be the time before polarity? And then as we spoke about last week, when the Anunnaki came to the Earth, when their planet started to die, we started to create a different species of human on this Earth, a species of earthlings that are mixed with star people or you know off worlders right star seeds and that's who we are that those are our ancestors so we're a mixture of of this earth and of the stars but when the anunnaki's came as well they brought with them the polarity of good versus evil that friction and that's why atlantis eventually fell again if you missed all of that that's kind of a cliff notes version watch the video from last week which is down in the description box below so let's move over to the right side of the column and see what doriel has to say about this in his commentary the halls of amente are peculiar among hidden spaces of the earth in that they are not in this octave of material vibration 
but are in a fold of space set aside from all other spaces. They have a direct connection with the positive and negative polarities, polarities of Yarkima. And there is no translation of Yarkima. But just in my personal opinion, this is giving me big time law of one vibes where we know third density is that, that density of, of friction between the two polarities. So basically, they have this, this, this place where the halls of Amente is almost in like a different dimension, right? It's beneath the earth, but it's in a different dimension. Now, if you remember from some of the journal entries from Agartha, that people spoke about it was like going through a portal so even a lot of people say to go into agartha which is the land between, beneath our earth they have to go through a portal so not everyone can just stumble into agartha you have to be at a certain vibration so even though the halls of amente are kept in this like area that's not necessarily accessible it is still connected to our world of polarity their approximate location in relationship to the earth is beneath atlantis but no one has to move out of the space fold to enter. There are various places where this can be accomplished. Sulphur Springs, Oklahoma, Mount Shasta, California, McTolan, South America, Shambhala, Tibet, Great Pyramids, Egypt, Black Forest, Germany, Baranese, India, Atlas Mountains, Africa. So again, all of these locations are the exact same locations to the entrance of Agartha. The far past time in the first cycle, which is fixed, is past space time. And that particular period, just after the negative descended on man and bound him to the material plane. So that's where we go back. And he says, far in a time past, lost in the space time, for the children of light looked down on the world, seeing the children of men in their bondage, bound by the force that came from beyond. So we're talking about the Anunnaki descending upon men, bringing a man into a polarity, which created our own bondage. Bondage necessary. If you remember, Atlantis was set up as the perfect, perfect place for us to find ourselves. Because we can't find ourselves without polarity. That's the whole point. Read the law of one. You can't get to fourth density until you go through third density polarity right then for a dwelling place far beneath the earth's crust blasted great spaces they by their power spaces apart from the children of men surrounded them by forces and power shielded from the harm they the halls of the dead side by side placed by place the other spaces filled them with life and with light from above build by them the halls of Amente that they might dwell eternally here living with life to eternity's end. Thirty and two were there of the children, sons of light who had come among men, seeking to free from the bondage of darkness those who were bound by the force from beyond. Deep in the halls of life grew a flower, flaming, expanding, driving backward the night, placed in the center a ray of great potence, life-giving, life-giving life-giving light giving filling with power all who came near it placed they around it thrones 30 and 2 places for each of the children of light placed so that they were bathed in radiance filled with the light life from the eternal life so now let's go back over to doriel's commentary the masters of that period or the children of light formed their own bodies from the primal matter and embedded it with life shiva and shakti so the children of light and we saw this in the first tablet where he talked about the children of light is who we are when we don't have our mortal body so that they're saying this is the soul this, this is the same thing from the yoga sutras the soul is now using the forces of matter as we will see in the hathor material tomorrow they're going to talk about the elements of earth fire air space water all that kind of stuff these are sentient beings of matter that are being used now to sculpt these bodies to inhabit the soul of light but the bodies are what get bound by polarity through these bodies has some outward form as man their interior structure was different having sense organs usable usable only by a double unit of consciousness male and female so the yin and the yang they were not bound with the negative 
or disorder of man and were therefore free to accomplish things the rest of mankind could not accomplish. So these are higher density beings coming into a lower density to speed things along, basically. Whereas the physical body of thought had been renewed every 50 years, the primal body required renewing only once in 100 years. It was in the first cycle that the halls of the Mente were built by the children of light who descended to this planet. By the forces they controlled, they warped space and constructed a Mente and bound it to Earth. The dimensional walls around it protected it from entry by any except the highest consciousness. So again, that sounds very much like Agartha and the things that we learned about Agartha, especially from Emerald Bird, who wrote that that you could not just enter into Agartha. You you had to vibra vibrationally match to get in. That's what they're saying here, too. The great space was subdivided into other smaller spaces and direct concentration of force from the Archema were centered in them. So again, that Archema is what's keeping this collective space connected to what's happening here on the outside of planet Earth, where we're living out this polarity now after the fall of Atlantis. There were 32 of these children of light on Earth having charge of the affairs of Earth. All right, so we come back to Thoth's tablet. There, time after time, placed they their first created body so that they might be filled with the spirit of life. 100 years out of each thousand years must the life-giving light flame forth on their bodies, quickening, awakening the spirit of life. There in the circle, from eon to eon, sit the great master, living a life not known among men. There in the halls of life, they lie sleeping. Free flows their soul through the bodies of men. Time after time, while their bodies lay sleeping, incarnate they in the bodies of men, teaching and guiding onward and upward, out of the darkness into the light. They are in the hall of life, filled with their wisdom. Know not to the races of men, living forever neath the cold fire of life, said the children of light. Times they are, when they awaken, come from the depths to the lights among men, infinite they among the finite men. So there's this kind of strange phenomenon that tends to happen. And we saw this with the half or activation from the Sophia code. A soul can fragment itself, right? So this is where we get twin flames, all that kind of stuff. So from my understanding, we're seeing these beings that came here. And they're able to be consciously in the halls of the mente, but also send fragments of their soul out into the world living among men. He who by progress has grown from darkness, he who by progress has grown from darkness, we need that darkness, right? Lifted himself from the night into the light. Free is he made of the halls of mente, free of the power of light and of life. Guided he then by wisdom and knowledge, passes from men to the master of life. There he may dwell as one with the masters, free of the bonds of the darkness of light. So let's pause there. Let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary, com commentary on this. In the hall, in the halls was placed a concentration point of vital life force or spirit. Yes, so that's what I'm talking about. There's an anchor soul that's sending other souls, fractals of that soul out to experience this polarity. We know that we have our higher souls, our higher selves living in the quantum Right, we get advice from our higher selves through divination a lot, while our lower self is here experiencing the karma of this dimension. Into it is poured the vital life force which supplies the very life of the planet. When an object on Earth disintegrates, the spirit which is freed is drawn to the flower of life in a mente to be called forth at need. It acts for Earth in the same capacity as the solar plexus acts for the human body. So that's very interesting. The flower of life. So does that make sense to you guys? The flower of life, when we, when a, a natural thing dies, when the body dies, the soul then has to come back and be rejuvenated, just like our solar plexus here in the, in the actual physical body, as above, so below. The thrones of the children of light were placed so that they were in the full flow of spirits, which supplied their bodies as fast as they lost their flow. Thus, a body placed under it did not have to draw life directly from the source, but bathed in its radiance. 
The balance was fully maintained. The consciousness was away, even though it had been there for centuries. Life force is so strong that the reservoir of the, of the body placed under it for hundreds of years was so fulfilled that it would last for a thousand years without renewal. Thus, 10 years of each hundred would keep the body young and powerful. Med bed. In most instances, the body was left for great periods of time and the children of light entered the bodies of men through birth. But occasionally they came forth in their original bodies, though not often. When one has attained the third, the third illumination, he is made free of a mente and can, if he desires, place his body beneath the fire of life and renew it from age to age. All right. That kind of makes sense to me when we are able to be harvested, as the law of one says, and graduate to the next density. So let's go back to Thoth's tablet now. Seated within the flowers of radiance sits seven lords from the space-time above us. Helping and guiding through infinite wisdom the pathway through time of children of men. Mighty and strange, they veiled with power, silent, all-knowing, drawing the life force, different yet one with the children of men. I different yet one with the children of light. Custodians and watchers of the force of man bondage, ready to lose the light has been reached. First and most mighty since the veiled presence. Lord of lords, the infinite nine. Over the others from each cosmic cycle, weighing and watching the progress of men. Sounds a bit like our Galactic Federation. So let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary. The seven lords are direct emanations of extensions from the seven cosmic consciousness beyond this. So yes, this is getting definitely into more law of one stuff where there are different watchers who watch different levels of consciousness and guard it to help you harvest up to the next level. They work independent of and yet harmony with this cosmic consciousness. They have control of certain forces from beyond, such as negative disorder, and have emanations on all inhabited planets in this, these cosmos. Other functions of the lords are the control of time machines, separating the four times, and holding back an onrush of disorder from the negative reservoir upon the flames of consciousness, which have broken away from it. It is their power which draws life force into its concentration point in the flower of life and holds it there. The Lord of Lords is the emanation of the ninth cosmic cycle and holds his or its title because it, it has the most highly developed and furthermore, further more extension of one yod. Let's pause there and let's go back to what Thoth is saying. Under he sits the Lords of the Cycles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, each with his mention, each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny of men by what we choose to do with our polarity, right? Our collective consciousness. There they sit, mighty and potent, free of all time and space, not of this world they, yet akin to it. Not of this world, but akin to it. Elder brothers they of the children of men, judging and weighing, they with their wisdom, watching the progress of the light of men. There before them, I led by the dweller, watched him blend with one from above. Then, he, then from he came forth a voice saying, Great art thou thought among children of men. Free henceforth of the halls of Amente. So basically, thought that you can graduate to the next dimension if you want to because you got it. So you're free now of the halls of Amente. What do you want to do is what the dweller is saying. Taste not death except as thou will it. Drink thou life to eternity's end. Henceforth forever is life thine for the taking. Henceforth is death at the call of thy hand. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth. Free as a mente to the son of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth. Children of light that has grown among men. Choose thou thy work for all the souls must labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. One step thou hast gained on the long pathway upward. Infinite now is the mountain of light. Each step thou taketh, but heightens the mountains. All of thy progress, but lengthens the goal. Approach ye ever the infinite wisdom. Ever before thee recedes the goal. Free are ye made now of the halls of Amente. To walk hand in hand 
with the lords of the world, one and one person purpose working together, brighter bringers of light to the children of men. So let's pause there and let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary. The yacht, it is a power which controls the negative in all the cosmic cycles below him, but equal in regard to purpose and control on their particular powers are the lords of the other six cycles. Though not of this cosmic consciousness, they are akin to it for all age formed forth from the same basic material, order, disorder, and have been born from the same source. The Yod, the primal source of creation. So yeah, it's kind of like the Gnostics. And we talked about this in one of our past readings. I did this on the Dark Outpost a while ago where I created a like a graph of what they're saying, where you have that one source God and then everything fractals out from it. Everything fractals out to then come back in and know itself. That's the whole point of the human experience, right? Thoth was brought upon the lords of Bihorleth, the dweller of Unal, and there, and there watched the dweller blend with one of the lords. In other words, enter into such harmony that they became one. From him came forth a voice, a voice. From him came forth a voice. The lords, not being of human form or vibration, could not speak in words. The energetic power, right, of consciousness. Their power was steep down so that Thoth could hear. Later, he became able to raise his own vibration so that he could hear the silent voices of the lords. But this did not occur until he had passed certain tests. Thoth was given freedom of a mente, or was given the key whereby that space could be opened by him at will, having access to the flower of life, need to die only when he willed it, so he had co actually conquered death. Thoth learned the laws of creation so that he can take up any form or body he desires. Following the law, he must now choose what particular work he will do for attainment of illumination brings great opportunity and power to work. So what's super interesting is that the law of one refers to this density this third density as the density of choice so not only is it polarity it's choice and so now that he has passed through he's graduated he's been har harvested there he's having to sit down and say okay what are you going to do now what are you going to do now in this next existence the height to which thought was attained is only a foothill of the great mountains of transcendental light towards which all cosmic consciousness are working as thought had attained one goal, he could therefore walk with those seeking a greater goal. All right, let's go back and read some more of Thoth's tablet. Taken from a hid, hid throne came one of the masters, taking my hand and leading me onward through the halls of the deep hidden land, led me through the halls of Amente, showing the mysteries that are known not to man, through the dark passage. Downward he led me into the halls, where sits the dark death, vast as space, lay the great hall before me, walled by darkness, but yet filled with light. Okay, let's go back to Doriel's commentary. It was one of the 32 children of light, not one of the lords, who conducted Thoth on his first tour of the halls of Amente, the place wherein the antithesis of life, which is death, reigned. So now he's walking into the place of darkness and death, so he's giving him a tour of what he now has passed through. This force being somewhat akin to that which is called life is found in the place of life. It may seem paradoxical to call death akin to life, but if we realize that it is through the action of death on the negative that life becomes freer, we can see its kinship. Exactly. This is totally what Patanjali is saying in the Yoga Sutras as well. Before me arose a great throne of darkness, veiled on it a seated figure of night. Darker than darkness sat the great figure, dark with the darkness not of the night. Before it then passed the master, speaking the word that brings about life, saying, O master of darkness, guide of the way from life unto life. Before thee I bring a son of the morning, touch him not ever with the power of night. Call not his flames the darkness of night, know him and see him, one of our brothers, lifted from darkness into the light. Release thou his flame from its bondage. Free let it flame through the darkness of night. Raise then the hand of the figure. Forth came a flame that grew clear and bright. Rolled back swiftly the curtains of darkness. Unveiled the hall from the darkness of night. Then grew in the great space before me. 
flame after flame from the veil of the night, and counted millions leaped they before me, some flaming forth as a fla flowers of fire, others there were that shed a dim radiance, glowing but faintly from out of the night. Some there were the faded swiftly, others that grew from the small spark of light, each surrounded by its own dim veil of darkness, yet flaming with light that could never be quenched, coming and going like fireflies in springtime, filling the space with light and with life. So let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary here. The Lord of Death is not one of the lords from cycles above, but it is of his cosmic cycle. Let me read that again. The Lord of Death is not one of the lords from the cycles above, but it is of this cosmic cycle. So we're in the cosmic cycle of death and third density. He was charged of the action of death force upon the negative, which surrounds each spark of consciousness. That darkness, which is a loss of consciousness or death, is called night. For in the unconscious lost memory of that which has been, he is told not to touch thought with the loss of consciousness. The Lord Death is told to see and recognize Thoth as a son of light, not to be held or touched by death. The hand of the Lord of Death is raised, sending forth a flame, a symbolic of the light concealed in the darkness of death. Light banishes the darkness. Darkness. Thoth is shown uncounted millions of flames, each a soul manifesting on this plane. That's really interesting. So he's shown all these millions of flames that's a soul ready to manifest into a human body on this plane. The brightness or dimness of the flame show the degree of negative disorder which they were bound. That goes back to what the Hathors were saying. That, you know, they were talking about, so we come into this world to learn to grow our consciousness. So the physical body also has to be in shape too to be able to hold a higher vibration so they're literally saying that here we're seeing the dim lights are bound by, by more bondage where the brighter lights have shed that bondage right the lord of death tells thought of the mysteries of life and death explaining how the soul incarnates in a physical body reaches the zenth of its growth and then passes through the change to leap forth again with greater light death comes but only as a temporary thing Life itself is immortal, existing from the beginning to the end. Always in the end, life and light must conquer death and darkness. Death desires that light banish his powers, for even death came forth from light. Thoth is shown his own soul as it drives out the darkness and flames forth into full light. The guide that leads Thoth into the great space in Amente and elsewhere, showing him mysteries revealed only to Adams. Among others, he was shown the inner spaces of the fourth dimension. It's the one above us, right? Thoth was again brought before the lords, and by the lords who had first spoken to him was commanded to choose his work. Thoth of his own accord chooses to become a teacher, bringing souls from the darkness into light. He is verified in his choice by the lord and commanded to go forth and work as he has chosen. So let's go back to Thoth's reading. Let's look at this again. So talking about the fireflies, a flickers of light that are souls. Then it spoke a voice mighty and solemn saying, these are lights that are the souls of men, growing and fading, existing forever, changing yet living through death to life. When they have bloomed into a flower, reach the zenth of growth in their life, swiftly then that I send my veil of darkness, shrouding and changing to new forms of life, steadily upward through the ages, growing, expanding into yet greater flame, lighting the darkness with yet great power, quenched yet unquenched by the veils of the night. So grow with the soul of man ever upward, quenched yet unquenched by the darkness of night. I death come, and yet I remain not. For life eternal exists in the all. Let me read that again. I death come, and yet I remain not. For life eternal exists in the all. Only an obstacle, I, and the pathway quick to be conquered by the infinite light. Awaken, O flame, that verse ever inward, the flame forth and conquer the veil of the night. Then in the midst of the flames, and the darkness grew, there one that drove forth the night, flaming, expanding ever brighter, until at last there was nothing but light. Then spoke my guide, the voice of the master, see your own soul as it grows in the light, free now forever from the Lord of the night. Let me read that again. See your own soul as it grows in the light, 
free now forever of the Lord of the night. Forward he led me through the many great spaces filled with the mysteries of the children of light, mysteries that man may never yet know until he too is the son of the light. Backward then he led me into the light of the hall of the light, knelt then I before the great master, Lord of all from the cycles above. Spoke he then with words of great power, saying, Thou hast been made free of the halls of Amente, choose thou thy work among the children of men. Then I spoke, O great master, let me be a teacher of men, leading them onward and upward until they too are lights among men, freed from the veil of the night that surrounds them, flaming with lights that shall shine among men. Spoke to me then with a voice, Go as ye will, so be it decreed, master are ye of your destiny, free to take or reject at will. Take ye the power, take ye the wisdom, shine as a light among the children of men. Upward then led me the dweller, dwelt I again among the children of men, teaching and showing some of my wisdom, son of the light, a fire among men. Now again I tread the path downward, seeking the light of the darkness of night. Hold ye and keep ye, preserve my record, guide shall it be to the children of men.